Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamu alaikum. Well, guys, in this video, I'm going to tell you how to fill your answer sheets and how to count your writing words. Writing task one and task two. What is the easy way to count all the words, right? Now, let's take a start. First of all, I'm going to tell you about IELTS listening. The answer sheet I have, this is black and white. This is actually black. But in actual exam, you're going to get answer sheet listening side is green and reading side is blue. Right? So that they could see during the reading test, if there is that uh, blue, uh, if during the reading test, if there is that green side, they can identify that and they can ask that candidate, turn it over. You're not allowed to go back. Okay. So, uh, the thing is, examiner is going to check your answer sheet only. Number one. Uh, not examiner, they call them markers. Markers are going to check your answer sheet only. Another thing, they scan your answer sheet. They scan your listening and reading answer sheets and then the uh, markers are going to check them on screen and then they are going to give you the band score and this is very very simple the number of correct answers and then automatically system is going to generate your band score. The thing is number one do's of filling in the answer sheet and this is these tips are for both listening and reading. The first thing is use all capital letters when you fill in your listening and reading answer sheets all capital right now for example if you have to write john capital j capital o capital h capital n just like this okay and one more thing you are only allowed to use pencil on your listening and reading answer sheet all all pencil no pen at all right so you will be writing everything in pencil you got to do some coloring shading candidate name candidate number and in actual exam they are going to spend good amount of time uh, filling in the answer sheet giving instructions about answer sheets and all that but my advice is use all capital if you make a mistake somehow you can remove it and then you can write that word again and very important point do not sometimes students because it's it looks alike it looks alike 40 boxes here 40 boxes here the first thing is you need to clearly identify that this is listening answer sheet and then write your listening answers on to listening answer sheet one of my students once by mistake wrote listening answer sheets on reading side and then he realized that immediately they, he requested in listening he realized that and then he requested the invigilators and they gave him another answer sheet usually they don't provide listening reading answer sheet but if it is done in the first one to two minutes that you've written four five six answers on the reading side in your listening chest you can ask them and they will give you another answer sheet and there's no problem about that okay i mean i'm telling you what you can do Next, it's reading. Oh, okay, for listening, they will give you 10 minutes to complete your answer sheet or to transfer your answers from the question booklet to the answer sheet. You will be given 10 minutes in listening. But in reading, no extra time will be given. Within one hour, you have to write all your answers to the answer sheet. For that, I advise my students, when you complete section one, transfer the answers to the answer sheet. When you complete section two, transfer the answers to the answer sheet. And section three answers should be written directly onto the answer sheet. Guys, remember, when they say candidates, stop writing. Even if you write an alphabet, you will be penalized. Right? Even your test can be cancelled. I'm telling you, even if you write one, one of my students, examiner, uh, the supervisor said stop writing and she kept on writing. She kept on writing. And then, you know, her result was delayed and later on test was cancelled. So they are very, very touchy about rules and regulations. It's not that unless they come and snatch the answer sheet from you, you go on and you keep writing. <coughs> okay. So this is all about listening, reading. Use all capital, right? Write your answer very, very clearly so that the markers read them easily without any problem. For reading, if it is a list of headings, use Roman numbers, okay? Not English numbers. And for true, false, not given, although you can write capital T, capital F, capital NG, but I advise you to write complete word. How long does it take to write true, T-R-U-E? So write full words so that there isn't any problem. 
After this, let's move on to writing answer sheet. The first thing is you can always request them to give you extra sheet, but you have to tell them whether you need that extra sheet for writing task one or writing task two. So if that is for task two, just use it for task two and otherwise task one. Now see that it is clearly mentioned task one. So don't do this mistake that over here you write task two answer and on task two, should I task one answer? I know students get puzzled on exam day and they do these silly mistakes. But anyways, task one. Now you can see all the lines then they're written down right below this line. And it continues on to the next page until here. Now, you should not leave a line when you are writing. Number one, don't use uh, big font size of your writing that in one line only three words or four words. No, write properly. But I advise you after each paragraph, you must leave a line. Very, very important. After each paragraph, you must leave a line so that your paragraphs stand alone. And that will be easier for the examiner to check on screen because writing is also on screen. Whatever you write, they will put it onto the scanner, all sides, and then examiner is sitting in, uh, if it is uh, IDP, examiner is somewhere in Australia and Canada. Most of their examiners are in Australia and Canada, they are marking it there. If it is British Council, examiner is there in England and they are marking it on computer, okay? So they are going to scan it all. That is why write clearly after one paragraph, leave a line, then write the next paragraph, then leave a line and your handwriting should be very, very clear. Write all the words, even small letters clearly. Now on to writing answer sheet, do not write all capital, okay? That is only for listening and reading. Over here, follow the rules of capitalization, punctuation, Right, proper sentence structures and each and everything, paragraphing and all that, okay? Uh, all right, now after this, how to count the words? One way, I would advise you that you must count the words and make sure for writing task one, you write 150 words minimum. 150 word limit is minimum words. You may write up to 200 words, which is quite fine if you manage your time because you have 20 minutes for task one and 40 minutes for task two. For task two, minimum word limit is 250 words, but you may write up to 300 or if your writing speed is good, you can even write up to 350 words. No penalty on that. That's perfectly fine. You need extra answer sheet. Just tell them task one or task two, they will give you extra answer sheet as well. Now, you can see in one line, average number of words. For example, count one line here, one line here, one line here, and divide it by three. For example, over here, you've got seven words. Over here, you've got eight words. Over here, you've got nine words. So divided by three means average word count per line is eight line. Now, count the lines multiplied by the number, uh, count the words, uh, count, first the words, okay, then count the lines multiplied by words. For example, if you've written 20 lines and there are average eight words per line, so that's going to be 160 words. For task two, for example, you're writing eight words per line, okay, and there are 30 lines, that means 240 words, you need to write some more. Okay, so this is how you can check and be careful, write clearly, write neatly, all right, after every paragraph, one line space, proper punctuation, proper paragraphing, proper organization, use of connecting words, first of all, secondly, finally, moreover, and all that. If you do it like this, if you write clearly, examiner will check it nicely. I mean, although there is no marking criteria for writing, neat writing, and proper structuring and all that, but if it is something clear, examiner will feel good while checking your writing, and as a result, you will get good bench score. Otherwise, you are uh, uh, underscored as well. I mean, you get lower than your, uh, than your capability sometimes if it is difficult for the examiner to read and all that, right? That is why EUR cases are increasing. But anyways, write clearly, okay? And then wait for the result positively and happily. All the best, guys. Thank you very much. I also, if you have any suggestions about filling the answer sheets, you must comment this video and share your ideas on that. I also teach IELTS online all over the world and on campus here in Lahore. If you want to be the part of my online or on-campus IELTS classes, my WhatsApp number is given. You can contact me for that. Asad Yaqub truly wishes you best of luck. Take care. Allah Hafiz.